Good morning, Emma. Yes, good morning from Shirehampton. It had been a lovely, glorious morning this morning. However, it's become a little bit more overcast now. Um, I'm near Shirehampton Park, where I've come to meet a man who describes himself as houseless, not homeless. Martin Cow. Good morning, Martin. How are you feeling this morning? I'm very well. Yourself? I'm very well also. Thank you very much. Now, you use Bristol as kind of a base, but you travel all over the place in your, I have to say, pretty impressive van. I'm standing outside Martin's van. Can I have a quick look around, Martin? By all means. But before we go in, you've got um, up here. You've got is that is that what's that CCTV? Is that a camera? Yeah, the can the camera the, the van's got six cameras around the vehicle that record constantly, just just so that I can leave the vehicle and go to work if I wanted to and not worry about. I mean, there's nothing to take anyway, but I don't have to worry about my clothes going missing during the daytime. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh well, okay. Well, we're going inside, and uh, it's all. It's decorated very nicely. It's got a lovely wooden feel. You've got, uh, you've, have you had a, the, the kettle is still hot. Have you had a coffee this morning? I've had quite a few actually. <laughs> have you? Okay. <laughs> it, it is early. It is early. I tell you what, this is a lovely, if I could describe it, there's a sort of wooden uh, interior. You've got a lovely bed in the corner. You've got a sink. Is there a water supply? There is. I mean, you're trying to describe it. A lot of people say like a narrow boat or like an old country pub. Like maybe that sort of look is what people. Like they, that's their first impression when they come in, especially with the Guinness pump at the end of the, the oh. worktop over there. A Guinness yeah, it's got pump, a very yeah, lovely old country pub aesthetic. Um, <laughs> um, Martin, um, how did you, um, how did you end up living in this van? Um, relationship breakdowns. There was no way that I was going from paying for a, a rented house with a girlfriend and her children to paying for that same thing, same price for me to be on my own. Like that was never going to happen, and it's never going to happen. Martin, do you, do you always stay in one spot or are you constantly on the move? Um, no, I move as much as I can. So I try and base myself where there might be a little bit of work or a little bit of money to be in or somewhere that I really want to go and see. And you're f I've been having a look at your Facebook page, which is Houseless Not Homeless. Why did you set that up? Were you trying to sort of break down some stereotypes about people who, who live in vans? Not originally, no. Um, I just filmed what I, I... I'm dyslexic and I really wanted to write a journal or a diary and it was never going to happen with, 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 how I, with how I am. So I thought if I just filmed it and kept a record and then slowly but surely people start to recognise you and yeah, people want to see more content and you, you make more content. Um, what would you say to the people that we've been hearing from on the show this morning who are critical of, of people who, who live in vans, who, who don't want them on the streets where they live? What would you say to those people? Buy a van. Like, <laughs> they, they should come and spend a couple of days with me, a couple of days with any of us, knock on our doors. If our doors are open, pop in and say hello. Like, we don't buy it. We're good people. And do you, do you think it's OK for someone to rock up and sort of take up permanent residence in a residential street? Um, that's, in, that's up to that individual that's involved there. I mean, I can't, I can't speak for somebody else. I mean, I personally would not do that. But yeah. I enjoy the freedom of travel. Yeah. Um, and there will be some people that think that, that people who do this aren't contributing to society. But as we heard from your example, had you not done this, you probably would have ended up homeless. Uh, more than likely, I mean, there was times where um, during the relationship I was actually living through a car or in a car. Um, it was just fortunate that I decided to buy a van and carry on. And yeah, when things did break down, then I had somewhere to go back to, which was a massive relief, actually. I yeah. mean, it wasn't easy, but it was it was there as an option. But you ask me if I'd go back to bricks and mortar today and I'll tell you, no, like I I enjoy what I do far too much now. Um, and f yeah, sorry, I'm. I'm stunned with my words now. No, it's fine. You're absolutely fine. Um, do you mind me asking, uh, only because I know there will be people listening this morning shouting this at the radio, people who live in vans and who travel around and whatever, some people feel m perhaps don't contribute to society in the same way as someone in a house would do or in a flat. Um, would, would you say you contribute to society? More than most people that live in houses. And that doesn't mean on a financial term by paying tax or working harder and paying more national insurance. So where I park up, I always leave it spotless. Like some places I park up and it's in a very bad state because of um, maybe local people in cars, they come down and have their picnics in the evening yeah. and leave everything. Um, but at the same time, I don't take anything. I mean, I, I don't have um, any income, income support or job seeker allowance or anything like that. So I'm, yeah, I think I'm contributing a lot. I think my, my impact is quite positive. Mm, it's good to hear. What about if you wanted a doctor, though, or if you want, needed to go to hospital, would you do that? 
Um, only if I really needed to. And yeah. I don't mind using an emergency walking centre and just saying, hey, I'm a traveller in the area and I've never been refused treatment. No. And f it sounds to me as though, for you, this lifestyle properly suits you and it brings you almost like joy. It's it's what you love to do. Um, 100%. I mean, my mental health is, is, is really good at the minute. I'm pretty sure if I was static, it would deteriorate quite quickly. And then it's a vicious circle into other things that could leave you to yeah maybe make different choices that aren't going to be as correct yeah absolutely it's been fascinating reading your facebook page and seeing your pictures and if people want to see your van because you you show them around your van on your facebook page as well listen martin thank you so much for your time this morning we really appreciate it no you're more than welcome thank you for having me on Martin Cow there and our reporter Chris Arnold in Shirehampton in Bristol. Martin's lived in a van for over six years now. He's got a Facebook page, Houseless Not Homeless, which is really interesting. Now, obviously, we're talking to different people with different experiences and different people who treat, you know, their environment around them in different ways. It's not the same for everyone, and we know that. Just like it's not the same for everyone who lives in a house. Some people keep their houses immaculate. Some people, you know, burn sofas at the bottom of their garden and have a barbecue in the middle of the night. It, it, it isn't, you know, this is society we're talking about. The current issue is that there appears to be up to 300 people in vans or caravans living on Bristol streets, but there are calls for injunctions to be used more often to move them on. We've heard that there's no official... Bristol City Council policy on how to deal with them. We understand it's going to be discussed by City Council Cabinet in September. I appreciate Martin being on the show because often it's difficult for us to get to speak to people living in vans because they don't want to talk to the media. So I'm, I really appreciate uh, Martin talking to us. 